Hi, it's Dr. Turan, and you're listening to The Pop. The Pursuit of Peace podcast is brought to you by SP Consulting Group, where the mission is bringing your vision to life. Are you all ready? We're here with The Pop, and we got a new guest. First of all, we are here with The Pop with yours truly, Dr. Shanae Turan. I'm getting all excited about our guest. But I just want you guys to know that last month was amazing. But guess what? This month is about to be even more of a next step into what we call finding peace. We were talking about Mm -hmm. servant leadership. And now we are ready to talk about being a mom, doing it all the way like a boss. I'm even wearing my shirt. I'm going to show y'all the mom. The myth, the legend. Dr. But guess what? Seen that shirt. You saw the shirt, right? Somewhere I did, yeah. This is what you call sponsored by, maybe one day I'll have my sponsors. I've been speaking stuff in existence and stuff been happening. But Mm -hmm. guess what? This is brought to you by Old Navy. Yeah, that might have been where. That might have (laughs) been. Oh my goodness. (laughs) Guess what? We have a special guest, Miss. Mrs. I'm sorry, Mrs. Christina Garrett of Mama Son Diaries. Yes. Thank you for having me, Dr. Shanae. Oh I'm my God, on your name. <laughs> <laughs> I've been telling people how like it's so funny that I, I truly, it's like depending on who it is, it's like yeah, I'm a doctor. Otherwise, yes, it's like, it is what it is. I'm yes. You know, some even people even call me that, but it it is what the T I E is. Yes. So we are ready. So first of all, let me just tell you guys a little bit about my situation first. My situation is if y'all see people walking around in the background, like so, or people driving in the background, I'm in a hotel. And guess what? I'm a mom. And guess what? This this session is about being a mom and being mm-hmm. a boss. How about mm-hmm. that? So. Let me tell y'all about Miss Christina Yeager. Okay, let me tell you. First of all, she is not only the founder of Mama Thon Diary, but she is actually like an organization and productivity coach who helps busy women like me empower their <laughs> discipline and refine their schedules. But she doesn't just do that. She uses the power of like delegation and priority management. I mean, she literally schedules all of us busy women because I don't know any woman that isn't busy mm-hmm. from faith. Mm-hmm. Like there's some power in this, okay? Yes. To streamline your schedules, use it with like practical strategies. And you know, I'm all, this is the pop, so it's the pursuit of peace. It has mm-hmm. to make sense, right? But it's supposed to all be for the purpose of getting more done, but doing it strategically so that you're doing less, you know, that whole work smarter, not harder thing. But she literally, like, Mrs. Garrett, literally, Mm -hmm. and I'm putting respect on that, Mrs. (laughs) Mrs. Christina Garrett leads a global tribe of like, not just women, like I said, folks like me, we wise, we out here doing it. We are yes. the moms, the myths, and the legends, okay, to build in the help that we need, you know? Mm-hmm. So basically, it's all about making sure that you're taking charge. Mm-hmm. Taking charge of your schedule, taking charge of just everything that's just crazy. And I just want to let y'all know, like, she, she got a tribe of divas, so that's why I had to put my, <laughs> my glam lyrics on today. <laughs> As I ran out the house with my little one screaming at the mm-hmm. door, I had to say, let me mm-hmm. make sure I got enough magnet eyeliner on here. You so extra. <laughs> so extra because I have to be because you <laughs> have a tribe of divas. And I'm going to let her truly tell you a little bit more about herself. But welcome to the pub. Thank I'm you so, so much. You. <laughs> Thank you for having me. You know, the first time we talked, we just hit it off. So, you yeah. know, there's. That doesn't happen with everybody, especially for me, you know, or if you're a woman in leadership, you know, you don't get uh, that 
synergy with everybody. But we got on the, on the Zoom call and it was like magic. And so you know, we've been looking forward to this time for a while. <laughs> absolute magic. Let me just say yes, that. Okay. Absolute magic. Absolute magic. So when it's all said and done, folks, we about to go in. I want to tell you guys, mm-hmm. I got to read it off because, you know, I'm a mama. So uh, it's not like this stuff just be stuck on the dome. So listen, we're talking about you're trying to, and I'm going to say it the way that it came to me in my head, even though I was trying to be phonetically correct. You mm-hmm. said you trying to do what? Well, how many kids? A lot. Five. <laughs> a lot. So that's what we're talking about today. And it really is just mm-hmm. the month of August. I was about to say September. We're not there that. yet. But... This the whole title of this month is really we're going to be talking about the busy woman's guide to peace. Mm-hmm. This is the pursuit of peace. Yes, but we need special stuff mm-hmm. to figure it out because we're always giving and doing stuff. And so mm-hmm. this is what you call unscripted mm-hmm. yes. with yes. the illustrious <laughs> Mrs. Christine Garrett of. Mama Thon Diaries. Oh, Please so tell us a bit more about yourself, your journey, and let's just jump right into it. Well, um, the Mama Thon movement really stemmed back from when I was a mom of three. <laughs> um, when I, when my son was your son's age, I found out I was expecting, um, went to the doctor. You know, what's hilarious, God has a sense of humor because I told my husband I only wanted to be pregnant one more time. My husband said, but I want three kids. So the way that God solved that problem was we went to the doctor with our almost two-year-old and, you know, she, the um, ultrasound tech is looking at the sonogram. She said, how many do you see? I said, are those eyes? Can you see the baby's eyes already? And she said, no, honey, those are babies. And then we practically passed out for a while. You know, when we came back to, I was a mom with three kids, two and under. And so I literally went from, you know, mommy and thinking that I was doing okay to being in fast forward, what seemed like all the time. Um, So once the twins got older, you know, maybe age one, age two, I really wanted to find practical ways to feel like myself again. Yeah. Because when we're always taking care of children and we're nurturing and giving, sometimes we just, we do feel like we've gone through an identity crisis. Yeah. Because you've gone from woman, you know, then you've adjusted to being a wife if you're a wife. But then mm-hmm. that adjustment to being a mom is one that really goes up against every element of your yes. femininity, you know. So what I like to tell the ladies that God, calls you by name, you know, he calls you Shanae, or maybe he calls you Nay, I don't know, he calls you Chris, you know, he doesn't call us by babe or mom mm-hmm. or all the other names that our family members call us or our friends know us mm-hmm. by, he knows us intimately, you yes. know, so what we have to do after we hit this point in a journey is to continue with that search for God, who are you saying that I am for this season of my life? And mm-hmm. for all the Mamathon Divas, I think that there's a, and this may be too deep too early, but I think, Just go for a, it. <laughs> I think there's a worldly stigma behind hustling and grinding yeah. where we begin to look at the people that God has blessed us to be stewardship over or mm-hmm. companions with, we begin to look at them like they're keeping us from being our best selves, you know, wow. and that's the... That is the yes. hustle mindset, you know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. when the world begins to teach, you know? Mm-hmm. And so we're like, go get it. Go do this. Oh, girl, he wants you to lay down at night. Uh-uh, tell him that you're about, you want to grow your business. And all over here. It's like, no, he just wants, he don't want the bed cold. That's why he married you, you know? Right. And so <laughs> we, we have to adjust. Like, we have to figure out how to do both. That's what my yeah. son says, even though it's reverse. I do both. I hustle yeah. and I home make. You know, it's yes. okay for me to be both of those women. Yeah. So for the Mamathon mission, we really surround our women with the techniques that it takes to be a woman in all the full senses that that means to be a wife or love your man or your partner well and to mother those children without feeling like you're a martyr for the cause. 
Um, right. And somehow, in between all of that, we're supposed to build dreams. And if you're not six and seven figures yet, you are failing and all these right. things. You know, then they throw homeschooling at you. If you're not an algebra genius like me, you know, you're oh. just pulling this together. <laughs> you're just you trying make to that together. Note, right? uh, call. Okay, not to be an algebra <laughs> genius. You get there. <laughs> oh, so it's okay for me to know my lane well. It's all right for me to be able to walk in what I know, you know, and still love myself and nurture myself and practice self-care in my pursuit of peace. Wow. So this is the thing. You and, like, again, folks like me, that's why I was like, I got to have you on there because it's like I get like a two-for-one deal when we're sitting here. Yes. It's like, how can you truly balance it all? And can you? Like, what does that really look like? Okay, so really balance is, they'll say balance is a myth. Um, mm -hmm. I like the term sometimes juggling or, you know, mm -hmm. there are a million terms, but we tell our ladies that it's all right to be a multitasker. Yeah. I don't know any woman other than the times where I'm sitting here with us, you know, doing an interview or a live or just connecting with my yeah. audience. I don't know any other times where we're just still doing absolutely nothing else and yeah. it takes a lot of um a lot of effort to make sure that we are that way and so yeah. i just want to normalize and celebrate that we are women who juggle you yeah. know what i mean and it's yeah. okay for you to some days i'm cooking dinner and exercising <laughs> you know or, you know so like so, in between the sets like at 30 seconds you go stir the pot you know i <laughs> And then you go back and you just do it again. Oh, you know, I don't goodness. know anybody, you know, that doesn't. And you do it too in your yeah. own way. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like, okay, son, yeah, I'm going to sit here and do this puzzle with you. And, you know, you do the puzzle and mommy's going to check her email or send this invoice. Or yeah. Email. I don't know yeah. who, you know, yeah. women who are not multitasking, not boss women. You know what I mean? It's always yeah. one thing and then it's another. Um, but yeah. I think that one core principle that has helped me, especially during the pandemic, and, uh -huh. is learning how to turn it off at a certain time. Yeah, yeah. I had to turn it off yeah. at a certain time. That's what's hard because, again, you're going and going and going, and you do need a certain momentum, so to speak, mm -hmm. to yeah. keep it going. Because I know, like, for me, and mind you, I'm someone that, as I had shared with you when we were talking, I'm someone that also has a <laughs> And so it's like, if I'm going to do something, if I'm going to do all that multitasking, mm -hmm. I need to keep going. And by a certain yeah. time in the day, it's like, if it's not done, uh, <laughs> it's probably not going to happen. The most time that I have is let me get a book that I know mm -hmm. I read 50, 11 times. Yes. That I'm memorized, that I'm reading to my son and go to sleep. Mm -hmm. You know, like, yes. But. When it's all said and done, if you're stopping and you're juggling, and even if I'm, even if I were to say this, juggling it all and maintaining my energy, mm -hmm. how how does that fit into it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's think about how we spend our energy. Okay. okay, I call this watering plants. I don't know if you can see behind me. Yes. I'm a plant person. This gorgeous. is just two of the 25 <laughs> that are spread out throughout my house. Okay, That's <laughs> so I'm a plant person. Yeah. I would much rather pot and repot my plants and mm -hmm. stare at them and water them, and that speaks to my soul and it's nurturing, and I just love it. Wonderful. Yeah. But nobody is paying me to water plants. No one is paying me to water those plants, okay? So watering plants is uh, synergistic with all the other things that we do that alleviate pressure from us, uh, pressure to perform. So let's say that, especially okay. for women who are business women, you run your own business, yeah. you're the person in charge, if you work a nine to five or mm -hmm. whatever, if you yeah. answer to someone, how, whoever you are, okay, yeah, you yeah. have some kind of work life associated with you most likely. Yeah. Even if you're a stay-at-home mom, you work. Uh -huh. yeah. So there are certain things that we go to do that no, there, there's no for real reward. It's not bringing the biggest return for us. Yeah. I often say that unless you operate a uh, a cleaning service, 
Yeah. You to vacuum. No one is paying you to, you know, do all the things. I know laundry has to get done. I understand it, but laundry doesn't pay invoices either. So what do I need to do in my day? What is uh, level one, two, three, four? Those yeah. top things that are going to bring me closest to my goals. And so inadvertently, your subconscious may avoid calling those potential clients because you're afraid they're going to say no. You may yeah. think that, you know, uh, uh, doing what your boss asks you is going to take too long. So I'm going to go over here and do something that takes less time, but it's not really at the top of the priority. You know what I mean? So there's no such thing as ever getting everything done. But yeah. what is the biggest priority as it comes to dealing with our home life, our business yeah. life, our families? You know, and so I may say, oh, yeah, I need to scrub all this and do all the things, yeah. but that doesn't pay bills. So, <laughs> so what is it that I need to do instead of that? And then hopefully I can promise you that a husband, when the bills are paid, when y'all doing it together or however, he's been well set. Okay. Because you saved your energy for sex instead of doing all, oh, I did all the laundry. He don't care about the laundry. He will wash yeah. his own clothes if he's getting some. So the whole moral of the story is what's on the top of the list of priorities? What's on the, what's on the top of the list? I would what's much rather water plants. I would much rather water plants. But nobody pays me to do that. Some days my house is half dirty. When my husband walks in the door, I say, hey, babe. He said, oh, good. She's in a good mood today. <laughs> <laughs> the kids did not run her away today. You know what I mean? Mm. And I can be the best version of Christina. He doesn't care about the dishes. He doesn't care about the Cheerios in the floor, all those things. Yes. It, it comes in his wife is his wife, you know. Yes. Yes. So a lot of times we think about juggling, balancing, multitasking. Mm -hmm. The bigger question is what's at the top of the list? And what can I delegate to my family mm -hmm. members? What can I pay somebody to do? You yes. know, if you're operating cleaning service, pay somebody to come in and Great. do it for you if you can. You know, if you have school age children who can play on tablets, they can vacuum. Delegate, yeah. you know, de and those things that you can't delegate is what you have to put first. Well, I love the fact that there's there's the sense of balance because that's the whole point of it, right? Yeah. The whole point is to balance it out so that when it's all said and done, you're not. And this is something that I struggle with. Those of us that have that perfectionist, you know, mindset, like everything mm -hmm. has to be perfect. Yeah. Things have to be just right, you know. And it's like when it's all said and done. The ultimate thing is moving forward, saying, and it even goes into how, and I really love the fact that you're, you're talking in this lane because ultimately we say multitasking, but there's some things that you just can't do well multitasking. I do yes. believe that there is such thing as multitasking mm -hmm. because I can literally, if my son, for instance, if it's like, He's wanting those little bristle blocks, you know, mm -hmm. so it's like uh, he wants a plane. And so he going to do whatever he's going to do while he's you're sitting alongside him. And I can be putting together a little plane and listening to a podcast that's going to help enhance, you know, whatever in regards to my yes. business and just yes. that right. actual growth that mm -hmm. maybe I wouldn't have time to do later on. Because he is wanting me to read. And so yeah. listening to a podcast, Ripley, you know, or TED Talk and also trying to read, that you can't do well. Yeah. But it's really about how do you minimize that pressure mm -hmm. that you put on yourself mm -hmm. to be perfect. The mm -hmm. pressure that you put on yourself to be like, you know what, um, I got to do it all. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I know that I've been in that place too of, okay, well, the house has to be clean. I'm going to be sane and <laughs> smile. Yes. In there. And it's like when it's all said and done, out of four of those things, one might be working, which is, I'm sane. Or, <laughs> you coming in and I'm coming like, what you yeah. want? Yeah. What you want? Yeah. Right. Can right. I be can, here? Can I be like, in my home? I live here. No. You can't. <laughs> Let me tell you. I, it was like an out-of-body experience for me. Uh -huh. And I would try to, like, have my, um, like, okay, 
I'm breastfeeding, right? When mm-hmm. I had my two year old, it's like he was breastfed and it was like my husband would come home and it's like, you know, hey, how you doing? And it's just like one time, let me tell you, I was yeah. like, um, can I have a moment? Because um I haven't felt in my skin since mm-hmm. that pregnant. Like Yeah. I'm an individual. Yeah. And yeah. I don't feel like I am because I already yeah. I'm always like this or yeah. the other side or you know, mm-hmm. hope and then bouncing while I'm doing this and it's just yeah. like, give me a second. And yeah. it's all said and done. Like you said, what's the priority? Mm-hmm. No one is able to give me that time. Mm-hmm. No one. So, so one of the things that I continue to infuse, especially uh, women who are wives and their moms, and they have now all of us are individuals, right? So, like you yes. said, I didn't feel I haven't felt like myself since I got pregnant. <laughs> My mother in law yesterday was was joking about us having another baby. I said, Ma, I love God. Please do not make me cuss on this phone. I can't have no more kids. <laughs> I just can't Now one more child. But you know, I love my five. Like one more not no, not one more. <laughs> I thought like, oh, you said one more. I was about to no, say oh. not, not okay. one more baby through through <laughs> this your body. Say, if somebody okay. dropped one off at my house, I might keep the baby, but it, it, if it had to come out of my womb, I cannot. So the moral of the story <laughs> is, though, being able to communicate your needs in a way that your significant other can receive and yes. respond to, receive yeah. it and respond to the same way that your love language is insert it here. That's yeah. the best way to speak to you. Every person has a way, a time. A meal, you know what I mean? Where, yes. you know, like, listen, baby, I made your favorite enchiladas tonight. I need to talk to you. You know, I need a day off. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And and to express that, I was working with a client one time and she was like, my husband just isn't hearing me. I said, mm-hmm. no, you need to make him something really good to eat. Put it in front and say, baby, I love you. I love our children. But if I don't get a break, I'm going to have a psychotic break. And then you you're look using at his eye statements. I love it. I love it. And you're and you look him dead in his eyes like I really don't want to have a breakdown. I need some time off. Yeah. yeah. He's gonna look like what? Okay, this is very direct. Yeah. It's very straight to the point. And <laughs> nine times out of ten, you married that man. Whoever these ladies are listening tonight, you married yeah. that man because you liked him. You yeah. loved him. You genuinely, even despite all of the hiccups and, and rough things that you went through in your relationship and yeah. all these things, you know, the yeah. highs and lows that we all go through, okay? Yes. You married him because yeah. you genuinely believe that he had your best interest at heart mm-hmm. when you married him. Mm-hmm. You know, said that he was looking out for you, for your family, and he mm-hmm. would make an excellent father. Mm-hmm. All of these, this is why you gave him the sex. That's what Kevin, Kevin wants to say. To say. You know, that's why you, <laughs> that's why you did what you did, girl. Lock them on in there. I just want to say for the record that we did say this was not kid friendly. This was for, yeah, we checked that box. And the both of us on here are married, so it's, thank yeah. you, Jesus, we're, you know, being appropriate. Yeah, so Amen. 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 So the moral of the story is, <laughs> I'm going to tell everybody, you a mama, you done the sex. So <laughs> So the moral of the story is being able to speak to him in a way that he can receive, right? Yeah, yeah. You're using your tone in a way that is building. Yeah. Your attitude isn't, yes. I can't stand you nor these kids and I'm yes. leaving. I have had those days where I just yes. walked out though. I ain't gonna lie. Yes. But for yes. the most part, <laughs> when I need a break or I need yeah. to step away or my husband sees that my eye is starting to twitch and all, all right. of a sudden he's like, baby, listen, just you know, go for a run. Go to go run to the city, you yeah. know, thirty minutes away, and get ice cream or whatever those things are that you need to do to mm-hmm. take care of you. You yeah. know, and we have to normalize in husbands, in wives, and in mm-hmm. children that it's okay to be left alone. Yeah, yeah. You and know, and to train it, them to do that. And when it's all said and done, you're doing that for the sake of balance. We're not saying one takes. And even when you're saying the priorities, 
um, and you writing that down for some, that's necessary for some. It's mm-hmm. like, you know, you just need to let some things go. Like you said, like, I'll get to the, 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 the plants, the mm-hmm. flowers. Yeah. Like, they got a little bit of time before they start trying to get brown on the edge. So, yes, they can get water tomorrow. But yeah. you just, like, shift it. And yeah. it's okay to be organized. And I just, I just want to stress that because some people, whether it's we do it to ourselves or it's the, the spouse or the partner or even, you know, family, if someone isn't married, if someone mm-hmm. is a single mom, whatever the case may be, from those internal thoughts out where it's like, oh, well, if I do this later, I'm saying it's not a, big priority it's not that's not always the case when you are prioritizing you want to realize that the priority is based around what needs to be done today are there any fires for Mm -hmm. if this doesn't get done will there be a situation yes there won't be a situation Mm -hmm. then it can just be rolled over be rolled over Mm -hmm. for some they like to hear that concept of put it on the parking lot you know (laughs) i like that put it on the parking lot I'll yeah. get to it. That way yeah. you are saying, you know what? You know, and that's another thing too, communication. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You are prioritizing. And again, like you said, there is always that intention that when it's said and done, your needs are, are, are important. And you expect that your loved ones feel the same way. Mm-hmm. However, we're not mind readers and neither are they. So, yeah the best thing that you can do is learn how to communicate. So I know you had touched on this a little bit earlier about just being upfront and honest. Can you talk a little bit even about that transaction of whether it's a partner, just a loved one, a roommate, a friend, uh, when you're saying, okay, I'm a mom, I'm taking care of these kids, I'm a boss, Mm -hmm. I may even have a nine to five where I'm also Mm -hmm. a boss. Yes. Yeah. And making sure that you're speaking up for yourself so that you can get to that place of finding that peace zone. Mm-hmm. Like, what are you um, Okay, so one of the things that I think of is to make it easy, okay? Make it mm-hmm. easy for you to leave. So, for example, every year, my best friend, Leona, who also, um, who also is a mom of five, okay. every year okay. for the last <laughs> five years, we have, how was, yep, five to six years, we have taken a momcation. Okay. Now, <laughs> now oh, if you can imagine, you need to take me with you. Keep on. Listen, going, come on, come on down to Atlanta in September. <laughs> so, so my here's the thing, in Atlanta. <laughs> Listen, we're not playing. Like I'm being so serious, my ladies. I thought about canceling, <laughs> and my girls were like, "If you host a conference at your house, we're just coming to your house." <laughs> They're like, "Cause we gotta leave these kids. We have to leave these kids." And I was like. Okay, like if you guys are coming, I'm gonna plan it. So yeah. you know, even in the midst of everything, we go put on some masks and we'll go put hiking and we leave it. <laughs> we leave it. Hand sanitizer. <laughs> yes. So the moral of the story is every year my best friend and I we take some kind of mom patient. The last yeah. year for the Momathon conference. Um, but the two years prior to that, either one time mm-hmm. I was pregnant, one time she was pregnant. But our husbands have supported by um keeping all the kids <sighs> Six, seven, eight. Now, yeah, now we take it. <laughs> Keeping all the kids while we go away for the weekend. Okay. Okay. So here's the key to go to leaving home. Number one, you have to make it easy. Okay. So if you're going, listen, you got to make it easy. So, and what what we're gonna do here is we're gonna say, well, you know, he should want to keep the kids. Mm-hmm. He should want to do all the things that fathers do. Mm -hmm. He should want to, we don't want to do it as moms. I don't want to feed you. You know, I don't want to, you know, get up and clean about none of these things are items on my list of things that I want to do. Okay. Mm -hmm. So here's what I try to do to make it easy for me to leave. All right. Mm -hmm. I will make my husband a bomb dinner. Let's say I'm going, you know, sometimes the mama sounds we go to the movies or just leave the house, group of ladies, hang out, go get food. We're leaving. We this what we did. We said, "Fuck kids." Then take <laughs> no. Take listen. No. We leave. We leave. So we, you know, if my husband, there were a couple times where I made like hot dogs and French fries, and he yeah. said, "Whenever you have ladies' night out, I get the worst dinners." And I was like, <laughs> "I said, you know what? My bad. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, because I'm rushing out the door. Yay, I'm leaving. Yeah. I'm excited. Yeah. yeah. I, so when I leave now, I make him whatever it is that he really loves to eat. The kids. Get up on the board. Make the floor for all I care. But Sugar Daddy, who probably came home early so I could leave on time, okay? He yeah. gets oxtails and rice with cabbage or whatever it is that he wants. Make him something good and then yeah. give those kids that melatonin gummy, send them off to sleep, and it's easy for dad to cheat. Because in reality, nuggets are here. In reality, he does not want to hear your mouth about how tired you are, how you need a night off. Go get the night. You stay yeah. here, watch the game, hear your wings, baby. I love you, sugar uh-huh. daddy. And when I come home, step number two is you drop it like it's hot. All right? Now, you should, oh of course, we don't always feel like this is what your flesh say. And this is what your girlfriends who are single say. They yeah. say, well, you shouldn't have to do all that to get a night off. You shouldn't have to do all these things. Mm-hmm. But don't men bring flowers? Don't men do just a little something extra to say, you know what, baby? You're mine, and I thank mm-hmm. you for what you do. And don't we love when we get cards? Don't yeah. we love when we get those extra adorations? For men, yeah. for a lot of husbands, they just want to get some with just a little bit of extra sugar on it. You know what I mean? And the thing is, we <laughs> want that. And, yes. It, yes. and even to take it a little bit to the side, just for a mm-hmm. second, when it comes down to it, everybody, not just us. And I think that it's important that as we take care of ourselves and we feel better, we don't feel, and this is a message for the men and the women, just so you know, disclaimer, when we feel better, we do better. Yes. So when it's all said and done, like, yes, men, we want the random flowers, not just when something went awry. Like, Mm -hmm. I I need some uh, white catalillins, you know, mixed in with some roses, you know. And you know, hint, hint. And then it's like, okay, I want this, but then the way it makes me feel, and then think about how it feels when you're stressed. So, mm-hmm. women, think about how it feels when you're yeah. stressed. It may not have anything to do with the relationship, anything to do with the kids. It may have to do with work. We're talking about our women that are on a marathon, mama thons, okay? And we just going and going and going and we just need to be filled back up with mm-hmm. the adoration, with the attention and the, we just pour it out. Like whatever is your, I'll say this, whatever is your love language, you know, mm-hmm. um, when it's all said and done, the men want it too. And it's almost like this cycle when you are in that relationship. And I want to be clear, we're talking about marriage, mm-hmm. but also for those that aren't married that are single moms for whatever reason and they're dealing with this too and how do I get that support from my mom you know I'm, I know I often ask her to watch my kids or mm-hmm. my sister you know the aunt or the friend yeah. and it's just like girl what you want you know you know mom thing. what you want you know how can we work it out to where there's a balance yeah. because ultimately the end goal is I can do better when I'm better, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I'll add to that, you know, is taking responsibility. So this was Mm -hmm. something that really helped me. I like that. um, That really helped me in my relationship with my husband, in my relationship with my in-laws, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And all these dynamics where um, maybe the family members kept other people's kids. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. but I had the turbo twins, <laughs> right? I had the turbo it's twins. Right. I ain't keeping two of them. We're not yeah. signing up. All of a sudden, now everybody's too too busy. You know, oh, no, I'm too old to keep them. T- oh, no, no, no. Oh, okay, listen. Oh, my head. Look, my head. <laughs> you know, I know I had the turbo twins. I get it, you know. So for a while, I'll be a little salty. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, and yeah. And we can be resentful to whoever. Yeah. You know, for yeah. whoever. So one yeah. of the things that rolling from those experiences even to mm-hmm. now, yeah. we have the ability to design our own lives. Okay. Yeah. We're allowed to design our lives, our present day, our mm-hmm. destiny, all those things. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brian Tracy will say, if it's to be, it's up to me, right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. if I am salty and it's hindering on my relationship with my with my mother, sister, no, best friend, <laughs> all these people, husband, whoever, 
okay, so you know what? My husband works on Saturdays. So when I go away for the conference weekend, how am I going to be mad at him for not taking off work to watch the kids? Mm-hmm. You already know that this is a family schedule. You so already know. again, that. where's the priority? Yes. To, yes. So, yeah, I love it. I so love it. Here, yeah. So here's where I'm going. Make it easy on you. Mm-hmm. Take responsibility that these are your children. You did the sex. You had the fun. They're yours. And even, <laughs> and even <laughs> if it's, you know, with your husband or certain expectations, make it mm-hmm. easy. So you may have to hustle a little extra sis yeah. to pay for that sitter. Yeah. yeah. I got to get a sitter for all of conference weekend. Yeah. All day Friday, all day Saturday. My husband's yeah. home on Sundays, you know. Yeah. I got to yeah. take responsibility. This is my thing. Yeah. If you want to go out and have fun, that's your thing. And you have yeah. to have time away from your kids. Yeah. So you need to own responsibility that nobody else has to take care right. of them. And your husband, if he's working, it's not even yeah. his responsibility at that moment that all of a sudden you yeah. want to go out and do something fun. And now you have an attitude yeah. and you're upset. Get the sitter. You know what I mean? Make it easy. Just yeah. do what you need to do to step away yeah. and not let it impact all your other relationships. And there's even intentionally the planning. Yes. Okay, we get it when it's something last minute and, you know, your girlfriend, especially especially those that are single, yes. they can do a lot of stuff that's last minute. But those of us that are moms, we can be... <laughs> that's a, that's, let, me not, let me not even say that because some people are out here struggling for real, so my apologies in advance. But seriously, it's known that moms have to plan because we plan around the kids mood, their poop cycle, their eat cycle, yes, every yes, cycle, their happens. tantrum cycle yeah. because we know it's about to be time for that. We do all of that planning. So again, like you said, I love it. Take responsibility because mm-hmm. again, pursuit of peace, the pop. What are you doing? We can be on here offering all kinds of gems. That yeah. doesn't mean that you're going to do it. But yeah. if you take responsibility and do it intentionally, mm-hmm. that's what we're talking about. Intentionally organizing, intentionally scheduling, putting some yeah. structure on it. And if you know that you're an extrovert and you got to be out often, mm-hmm. granted it's the pandemic, but you can plan these things. Hey, every other week, this is mm-hmm. what I'm going to try to do. And I'm yeah. going to have my A, B, C, an XYZ plan, just mm-hmm. in case, you know, like somebody that you text and like, um, I haven't heard from so-and-so, so yeah, I might need you, you know, yeah. whatever yeah. it is, regardless, regardless of your situation of how stable this person was, your babysitter, you have a babysitter, or you have a nanny, you know, that yeah. would be nice one day to have, but if you don't have that, mm-hmm. yeah, even your nanny could be like, I'm sick. Yeah, I'm not yeah. coming. And what you gonna be mad because yeah. they sit and then oh my plans all real. and then you got an attitude and then it just affects the whole house. Mm-hmm. But being able to learn by doing it and practicing mm-hmm. it, yeah, is big on setting precedents for a habit because mm-hmm. it it all sounds nice, but until you consistently try it, work out the kinks so that you have yeah. your sure fit A, B, and C plans. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a wash and you're going to be upset. And like, like yeah. you said, like that's so important. You end up getting resi- building up resentment yeah. because you don't have it. But something that I love that you have mentioned um, that I wanted to bring out here is when it's all said and done, what is God saying is important? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What is yeah. God saying is like, how do you pull in God into the conversation to say, I may not have the mindset for this, maybe for whatever reason, you know, mm-hmm. you have chaos in your head, pandemic, pandemic. So I'm yeah. walking around here like this, like everything going crazy. But mm-hmm. what is important? How do I need to ground myself? You know, one thing for sure is God says, you know, be anxious for nothing. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's like, okay, well, what is bringing that anxiety on? And if I can't figure it out, who are you going to to get that source of clarity to how to manipulate the situation in a way to mm-hmm. transform your situation, right? Because yes, when yes. it's all said and done, we can't have folks getting up to the point where they burned out. Mm-hmm. Right, absolutely. And so here's, uh, so, <laughs> you know, one thing that I love but what you said, when we're thinking of what God says is important, right? Mm-hmm. One day, 
you will not be here. We pray that we'll be 99 and we'll just blow away like on Avengers Infinity War, right? We hope that we'll be old as dust and we'll just fade away, <laughs> you know, one day when we finally go. But you don't know when you're going to go, right? Yeah, you don't. Um, you don't. So here's the thing. One day, God is going to ask you, did you take care of X, Y, and Z? And most likely at the top of that list is going to be your family. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we can say, and I, I, I it's kind of laughable, you know, oh, we're living our purpose, blah, 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 you know, all this like little illustrious, almost makes you feel like you float above the floor, everything is a prophetic move, yeah. you know, all this kind of stuff, but you better prophesy that laundry done, you better probably, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Sometimes everything is so spiritual, so hyper-spiritual, <laughs> that we have to, you know, <laughs> Proverbs chapter 14 is one of my favorite scriptures, mm -hmm. um, because Verse one says, a wise woman builds her house, but a foolish one tears it down with her own hands, right? Mm -hmm. But then when you go down to like verse four, it's an agriculture type scripture, but it took me a second and it kind of clicked in my mind. And I don't have the exact phrasing, but it says something related to, um, if you have an oxen, right? Mm -hmm. You will have to clean the stable. You can avoid cleaning the stable <laughs> if you don't have an oxen. But without the oxen and the dirty stable, you mm -hmm. will get no harvest. It's all about stewardship. Yes. It's yes. stewardship. It's yeah. like one, if you can't, look, this is even, and I know you know this, because I'm sure your husband talked about it being uh, in the ministry. Mm -hmm. If you can't take care of home, what is she doing? <laughs> Like, I don't even know what else to put to that because it's just like, yeah. if you have this, yeah. there's nothing else that can come next. Like, what you are doing at home and in your household, and again, for those that are single, they're single parents, they're mm -hmm. still on the, you know, they're still writing their mama time. That, yeah. that, yes. You know, they're doing this, but when it's all said and done, if you have no husband, no spouse, no partner, nothing like that, and you have the kid, or kid, you then have to take responsibility of yourself. Mm -hmm. Take care of yourself because yeah. when it's all said and done, those kids can't watch themselves. Yeah, that's if so true. You, if you off mentally, you stressed out, you're burned out. Because mm -hmm. I am doing a course on burnout. Okay, mm -hmm. if you are burned out. You are not good for anybody else because one of yeah. the biggest signs of burnout is a lot of the symptoms that you start to list off when it comes down to depression mm -hmm. and not yeah. even caring. You yeah. Lose yeah. interest in things that you were previously interested in. Yeah. You're, you know, sitting up there not doing and performing as well. So if you have kids that are, you know, this is this is your job. This is the job that God gave you. It's a taste of kids. And yeah. you can't do that stressed out. You can't do that spasm off because then what are you doing? Perpetuating a cycle of anxiety? Mm -hmm. stress, or for some, unfortunately, abuse? No. Yeah. You need to take yeah. responsibility and say, you know what? It's not being selfish. It is mm -hmm. being in a space of self-love and self-care. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And when we're thinking about you know, what God says is important. Mm -hmm. One thing that is key is, number one, like I said, you will not always be here. So mm -hmm. one day God will ask you, what did you do with the the things that I gave you to steward over? Yeah. But number two is, your family is going to be left behind after you're gone. Yeah. Right? So what do I want them to say about me after yeah. I am gone? So when I'm thinking about the moms who are now homeschooling yeah. and they're frazzled and <laughs> all these things, it's like, well, wait a second. You know, I was telling another girl who also has five kids. So you better watch yeah. your circle because I got everybody I know got a lot of children. So anyway, <laughs> but uh, you know, we were talking about home to... <laughs> disconnect. So one of them, you know, she has five children. She's starting a homeschooling journey, and I was just emphasizing relationship and respect over education every yeah. day. Yeah, you yeah. know, so if I can say, you know, between me and my husband and me and my yeah. children, we emphasize having a healthy relationship. Mm -hmm. Not you, not me being able to teach you everything and always being right or all these things. Yeah. But in reality, my kids are going to 
you know, unfold my story yeah. and they grow up and they get married and they have kids. What yeah. do I want them to repeat? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Do Are they going to need therapy to get rid of it? Or are they going to say, man, you know what? My mom, you know, she would stop what she was doing and do this. So we yeah. would just go out and have fun. Just go hike in and just go do random stuff. She would cancel school yeah. quick if it was a beautiful day outside. And we would just go enjoy ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I've been one of those neurotic moms where <laughs> literally I have a picture of a spoon and a paper clip. I talk about it in my home organization. <laughs> and so I had a picture of a spoon and a paper clip that was on the floor. And I, this was years ago, I went off. And I was like, y'all don't keep nothing clean. Y'all don't respect me. <laughs> it was like a, a whole breakdown. And I stopped and laughed at myself and took a picture of the spoon. I think it was like a rubber band. It was like three tiny little things <laughs> together. It was probably a toddler playing with it on the floor. And, you know, but I was like, y'all don't get do anything. I've been cleaning all day. You know, just crazy. And so I have to learn how to tone it down. <laughs> You know, I had to sleep. learn how to yeah. do it, you know, and adjust your expectations yeah. because your kids will repeat who you are, yeah. how you talk to them and yeah. all that kind of stuff. You see yourself and your children. And yeah. so what we want to do is create a legacy, you know, mm-hmm. that shows the beauty of human relationships and connection and, you know, that my, your, they saw their parents love on each other. You know, yeah. I told them, it's okay for you to step away if you don't feel like being bothered. Just go in my room and sit on my bed for a while yeah. and draw or watch a movie or whatever yeah. so that you can be by yourself. Yeah. We have to normalize good, healthy connections. Yeah, and even on those times when I need to step away, you know, mm-hmm. I'm honoring and respecting, you know, who you are as a person. Yeah. And that means I expect the same thing for me too. And so yeah. that might be me. I don't have kids walking on me in the shower anymore. I have five children, y'all. And I had to pop off. Maybe the big, maybe the baby, because he a thug. He ain't learned yet. But he went. You <laughs> crib walking into yeah. the uh, Yeah, I'm coming in. Mama. You know, point at the toilet. Stop. Uh-uh. Don't do that. Uh-uh. You know, but my <laughs> older children, you know, I'm like, there's no reason in the world why anybody over age three should be walking in on you naked <laughs> while you're using the bathroom or doing any of this stuff <laughs> because we have to teach them boundaries and limitations. Yeah. But, you know, so yeah. I, I, I've been known to grab that bottle of shampoo and do it. Call it off. You know what I mean? Like, just lose your mind. Right. It only take about two hundred right. times. Before they're like, my mama is crazy, and I will not walk in I on her bathroom anymore. Right? <laughs> no more. I'm not gonna do it anymore. And that just helps to foster in them a, you know, people <laughs> need space. I can't, I can't go to the bathroom without you walking in. Like, all I'm gonna say, do not try this at home. <laughs> Let her cuss. See what I said? I ain't say hit the baby with the bottle of shampoo. I said hit the door. And they go say, "Oh my gosh, my mama is crazy." <laughs> but there has to, there got to be a, a happy medium, yeah, you know, of old school yeah. mom with new school mom, you yeah. know, where you know, my, our mama's mamas or mom, like yeah. they will have an all white living room. My mother in law yeah. to this day has a all a, all light colored living room. You bet not. And everybody would ask, "How do you keep your white couch white?" And she said, "Okay, they know better." And to go in there, that's that's my sitting room. Definitely. And she ain't but yeah. five two and you right. better know she and no you. one goes in there. <laughs> and if Nobody you goes sneak in and I look, my grandmother has that white room. And if I try to go in there with some See? pie, it don't matter how grown I am, I will if I take a step, I'll be like yeah. back out. I don't even do the turnaround because then I don't want nothing to just accidentally like spill. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, there's these boundaries. Everybody has a way that their mama wanted things. Yeah. You know, your children should be no less. They yeah. say, you know, my mama did not play about boom, boom, boom. She yeah. did not play about you just going to leave your, your dish sitting there. You're going to put yeah. at least put it in the sink. Even the two-year-old rants, can put his dish in the sink. Rants at all. Rants Rants. 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 You know, so we have to, you know, be loving enough to implement yeah. those same things into our children, you know, yeah. and say, all right, I want to build you up, and but not at the cost of losing myself, yeah. you know, absolutely. and that's what's important in our pursuit of peace. Yeah, absolutely. And I want to just 
ask if you have like a couple of tips, like we have about nine minutes, mm-hmm. but just share with us like a few tips that you have for in general, if they don't remember nothing else, because they busy and they got 50 million things to do, the kid and hitting them in the head with the shoe while they was yeah. trying to watch this. What are some things that you can recommend for our moms, our single moms, moms with, you know, a spouse to truly help them with managing their self-care, their stress, and Mm -hmm. all of their responsibilities? Um, Well, I can think of a couple right off the top. Number one is what I call the Momathon 5 tier to-do list. All right. right. And so the moral of this entire picture is envisioning yourself where you want to be in five years. Okay. This big, beautiful picture, however big it is, where are you going? What's the mission? What's the dream? Yeah. Can you envision yourself in this position? Um, in five years, I'll be sending a kid off to college. Like, what is that about? <laughs> it will happen to you too. Like, you will not be ready. So, you know, in five years, my life is going to be making a shift, right? So where yeah. I want to be in five years. And then we take that five-year dream uh, completely enthralled with how much money I want to make the position I'm going to have, what kind of woman I'm going to be. And then mm-hmm. we will wind it all the way back to where, what do I need to work on this week and this month? Okay. Yeah, so what I usually do with clients is we kind of map it out with bullet points even. Okay. Yeah. We're going to, all right, so five years, great. What do you need to be in one year? Yeah. Closer to that five-year plan. What do I need to be at the end of this quarter? Right. You know, to get closer. Where do I need to be at the end of this month? You know, we kind of will wind it all the way back. Mm-hmm. So we'll really start with that five-year goal. And it can be as outrageous and as ridiculous as you want it to be. Have you Mm -hmm. never run a day in your life and now you want to do an ultra marathon? Write it down. I know your knees are a little special. (laughs) Write it down. You know, it's okay to dream big, okay? So that's number one. (laughs) Number two, (laughs) you're silly. Number two is I will recommend declaring your home base zone, okay? Your home base zone comes out of a book um, I have that's called the house that cleans itself by uh, Mindy some Mindy Starnes Clark. Okay, the house that cleans itself by Mindy Starnes Clark. Okay. And in the book, she talks about something called a home base zone. Mm-hmm. The home base zone is that area of your home where, um, when it's clean, you feel euphoric, mm-hmm. you experience clarity, you love walking through it. And it's like, yeah, girl, I hook that space up. You know, yeah. you love this particular area. It could be in your room. It could be a closet. It could be your kitchen. For everybody, it may be something different, a different space. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I want to encourage you to clean it up. Okay. Whatever space that is, clean it up. Mm-hmm. There's clutter yeah. there. Pick the clutter up and move it to a different area. Just yeah. get it together, okay? Yeah. So in my home base, and that's my living room, dining room area in my house, right? Mm-hmm. I hate walking out in the morning. And there's stuff everywhere. It's like oatmeal for my kids. I'm like, I don't even know why I had y'all. You know, like, I just, <laughs> you know, so I want to encourage, especially the women, because husbands care, but women really care. And yeah. a lot of times uh, our peace is disturbed by, yeah. you know, our things space. not being the way because mm-hmm. our space is cluttered and, you know, we're not able to operate just visually. I don't yeah. feel clarity there. Yeah. So your home base zone is the area when it's clean, you feel clarity and euphoric. Mm-hmm. But when it's dirty, you feel frustrated, stuck, yeah. you know, you're irritated by it. You may not even yeah. be able to know that that's why you're irritated, but it mm-hmm. is. Yeah. So I want to encourage the ladies watching to clean up that area, okay? Yeah. And then demand that it stays that way. Yeah. All right. Now, my husband, it's uh, almost eight o'clock here in Alabama. I don't know what time he's coming home tonight. Okay. So, because he, he's a barber, so everybody's getting club ready, even in the mask. Oh, no. Where this weekend. <laughs> so, so, he works late Thursday, Friday, Saturday night. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, when he walks in the door, though, I'm able to adjust my expectations. You know, some women say, oh, he came in, he dropped his shoes on the floor, his pants, whatever. It's not those two items. It's the mm-hmm. fact that everything in that area is yeah. jacked up. Yeah. You know, that now you're lashing out at him because mm-hmm. he dropped those one or two items. That's silly. You mm-hmm. know, instead, let's clean that area up. Yeah. And that one, his shoes on the floor does not bother me yeah. because, you know, everything else in that space is together. Yeah. And so lastly, um, on the journey to, you know, just experiencing more clarity and peace, 
you know, really internalize what you want in terms of self awareness. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if you don't know what you want, no one can give it to you. If you don't know how to tell your children, leave me alone for this amount of time, yes. they won't know to give it to you. If you yes. don't train them on how to stay where they are for an hour or two yes. hours and do not come in until I emerge from this interview, they will not know to do it. <laughs> so you okay? didn't tell me you didn't have anybody to do it? <laughs> There's nobody out there babysitting my children. You better not come in here while I'm still doing, you know, yes. this is what it is. Mama yes. working. Mama oh working, God. you know, especially, if, you know, this is where we are now in terms yeah. of the pandemic and everything, you know. You need that you have space. To do. You oh have God. to have that space. You have to. I love it. I love it. Yeah. And just to even throw in there and add to what you were saying when mm-hmm. you were talking about, like, the last week, like, making sure that you are really aware. Yeah. To add to that is once you become aware, manage it. Yeah. Self awareness does really good with self management. Yeah, you can't just good. know better and think you just gonna automatically do better. Mm-hmm. For those that are like, like sort of uh, nerds like me, you know that's mm-hmm. called the GI Joe fallacy theory. Just because mm-hmm. you know better, don't mean that you do better. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. Make sure that you listen to these nuggets. Like we're gonna end up having to have you back on here, and I got the. Uh, <laughs> we need to have some more talks. But <laughs> I am just so so grateful for the nuggets, y'all. If y'all forgot what she just said, I'm gonna make y'all go visit her. <laughs> y'all gotta go check her out. Come on. Because we're not on here trying to stress ourselves out. Mm-hmm. And I say it's almost time. We honor our yes. time. Okay? Yes. And it is two minutes to the hour. So how about this? Tell them in one minute yes. how they can get in touch with you. Okay. So you can find me on Facebook and Instagram at The Momathon Diaries. Um, and you can always check out my services and events and all the awesome stuff at runningamomathon.com. Um, we specialize in being a tribe of wise women who build, of helping professional women and mompreneurs to streamline and just get their whole life together without going completely gray. Yeah. <laughs> so come got, find me. And you got 30 seconds because you got an event coming up. Tell them about your I event. I do. I do. So the Momathon Conference <laughs> this year is going to be both virtual and in person. All right. <laughs> we are taking a very small group of women into a gigantic ballroom at a beautiful five-star retreat hotel. Um, and we're just going to really break it down. We're going to run away from home because I think that's all they really want is to leave. Yeah. And so yeah. even if you can only attend virtually, you can get yeah. your ticket at runningamomathon.com. And we will be sending out uh, self-care boxes. To every attendee, yes. so no matter how you attend, whether in person you get a uh, digital you get and uh, product swag. Yes, oh. so we would love to connect with you guys and host you. Listen, visit her, check her out, and if you have any questions, you didn't get to write it down. Visit us at sp and I'm going to say www dot the official sp consulting group dot com. That's www that official stconsultinggroup.com and guess what we'll be back next friday so see you guys it's the top of the hour thank you so much so much for being here with garrett i so appreciate you and thank you so much for having me